One of the little discussed aspects of all of this searching for change under the taxpayers' couch cushions has to do with PERS. And Fred Starkey, I've talked to you off and on over the years, and he's a big investment guy over in, what is it, not Eugene. You're in Springfield, Springfield. right? Yeah. Oh, Harvard Light Investments. And you have made this your passion exposing what you say is the fraud of the public employee retirement system here for a long time. Uh, you wrote a number of years ago, Oregon's Grand Delusion, PERS, and you have a new or an updated version of this called Oregon's Grand Delusion 2. And let's let's take a look at Josephine County and this uh, drive for the public safety. You say a lot of what's going on here, uh, Fred, is about PERS, public employee retirement. What's the story here? Yeah, it's it's driving the budget. It's It's destroying the state. Uh, they can't pay it. They, I've, I've made that statement from the beginning. PERS cannot be paid. And as of today, from Jacob Shavitz out of Utah, who's a congressman, local state pensions in this country are four trillion plus, have four trillion plus in unfunded liabilities. Mm. They owe four trillion to get it back to even. What about the, the state of Oregon, though? Because we hear happy talk out of uh, out of Salem for the most part that uh, things were fixed a number of years ago. May I, may I add a little fact here? Okay. Almost 20% of all citizens in the state of Oregon are on food stamps. The average credit card debt in this country is 15263 Check, yeah. People are in debt. All you have to do is read the Millionaire Next Door book and see how much money people really have. They basically have nothing. Yeah, well, the average, uh, but but the average uh, employee over in Josephine County, for example, which you write in The Grand Delusion, too, is about 50000 though. They're doing okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I called them. That's where I got it. Mm -hmm. So uh, the majority of PERS are Tier 1. And I know that when we talk about PERS, there's uh, the other tiers which are are, um, done much more reasonably. But uh, the problem is that we have many, many employees that are Tier 1. And and those are the ones that are causing the problem. It's not their fault. I mean, they they went for the deal, uh, and we had lawmakers that, that offered it, right? I mean, I'm not blaming the employee, or should we? Well, that's not really the problem. This is a little bit of a deception. Oh, okay. Because when they retire, they get an 8% return to fulfill the pension obligation. They're assuming that they're going to make 8% every year in the stock market, and this will pay for their pension. So they don't have the money to pay it, which is proven when you compare it against the private sector. They have about half the money. That's all they have. Now, isn't the traditional rate of return for the long term for safe investments maybe 4 or 5% at best? By law, by federal law, they have to use the AAA corporate bond rate to discount their liabilities or assume a rate of return, mm-hmm. which is between 3 and 5%. 3 to 5%, I, but, but we say 8%, and we're going to give you a cost of living adjustment of 2%. On top which of that, is not, which is not in the private sector. And what I did is I called Fidelity Investments, a huge firm in this country, and I asked them, I said, what would it cost to fund a $150,000 a year pension for a single woman age 60? And they told me with no COLA. With no cost of living two, adjustment. Okay. No cost of living adjustment. That would be $2.833 million at age 60. This would be an example of one Josephine County, uh, at least a former Josephine County employer, Rosemary Pageant, right? Right. Wasn't she the CFO, I, I think? Or I she... have no idea what she was, but there's no way in the world that she could have, been, could have saved $2.833 million by age 60. Well, she's retired now, and her, let's see, according to what you're saying here, that technically, with the way they play fast and loose with the math, with PERS, that technically what she would have had to have had put away to be able to generate her $150,000 a year pension. I guess her well, her final salary, I guess, was $147,000 a year. Right. I, but she's actually going to get more than that, from what I understand. Right. Uh, so she would have required to have had $2.8 million put away. You know darn well there's not $2.8 million put away in a public no employee way. retirement system. There's just no way they could have done that. Over her no, time. because you do, you can't assume eight percent. That's hmm. that's something outside the federal law. You can't do that in the private sector. So you'll go to prison. Yeah, but we assume this in the state system. So right. Uh, the problem is, is that this is codified. The uh, the state courts have basically said that this is the deal you signed, so you've got to do it. And so the taxpayers are on the hook for 
the difference. Isn't that really what we're talking about? Exactly. And so they're raising taxes on everything else besides direct tax to try to fool people. That's what they're doing in Salem now. But it can't be paid. Now, they've already, from Milliman actuaries, have said that PERS, by two, by 2034, they're going to need another $7 billion. And that's they're forecasting this using 8% discount rate. Now, the stock market goes flat, not even down, just goes sideways. It's going to be bigger than $7 billion. They're going to double the cost of PERS. Today it's 3.5, or 2012 is 3.5. It'll be twice that by 2034. Money guy Fred Starkey on the program here once again, and he's with Harbor Lights Investments. So you've uh, been painting a very dark picture for a long, long time, but it still appears to be working okay, Fred. (laughs) What would you say to that? Yeah, well, 20% of the people are on food stamps. The economy's collapsing. So you have deflation right now, but that's always going to lead into inflation because the, I, what the governments always do in past history is when the thing tightens up and it goes down, they print more money. Mm-hmm. That's what they always do. Fair enough, and yeah. So that, that's what's going to happen. So now it hasn't hit yet because you've got a currency going war going on. But Thomas Jefferson said, and I quote, the principle of spending money to be paid by posterity under the name of funding is but swindling futurity on a large scale. Speaking of the swindling, though, uh, let me ask you this. You say that the tax increases, the extra billion in expenses, everything that's being brought to us from the legislature right now, this is really effectively a margin call on the public employee retirement system. Can you explain that to non-big financial brain types like me and other folks listening so we understand what this means when you say it's a margin call? Well, a margin call, I'm in the... I've been in the commodity business for years, so you only put up part of your money to control X amount of assets. Mm-hmm. So that's usually you have to meet a margin call to to take delivery or give delivery. You have to have the margin. You have to have the money up. So what PERS really is is a leveraged account because they're using 8% instead of 4%. So they don't, but they pay out on 8% when you really can only get 4%. It's a fraud. It's called unjust scales in the Bible. Okay. So they don't have the money to pay it. They're assuming they're going to get 8%. But even if they get 8%, they still can't pay it. That's, they've, did, they've done pretty good here the last five years, haven't they? They've, I don't know what their average is. Over the last five years, but there were a couple of years when the stock market went south that it really hurt them. And then right. trying to, and, and trying to make up once you went down so far, once you dug yourself a pit, uh, ultimately that uh, continues to, to, uh, to push a bad, uh, a bad penny well, down the road, I guess. You have to understand the geometric mean, so they're just catching up. Hmm. My point is, is Warren Buffett said the 100-year average is 5.3% return on your money with dividends, and they're going 8%. So hmm. they're way above the average. It can't be paid. Otherwise, they wouldn't be $4 trillion in, uh, with unfunded liabilities. So we uh, cut a deal then back during uh, times when stock markets and interest rates were way, way higher, right? And we just locked ourselves right. into a bad deal then. Right. That's what they did. Well, yeah, that's what they did. And, and I've said the only answer out that I can understand the answer is, is you can't work for the government more than 10 years. Yeah, I know. You talked about the everybody gets a fair shot at <laughs> a government job sort of thing. Well, that's the only way out of it. That yeah. or shut PERS down. I mean, and give them the money, and that's the end of it, and that's the problem. And so we, we, can't change, we, we, we can't change the rules, though, for people that are currently in Tier 1. You can't change their deal now. But you could just stop the program you're saying that is what needs to be done you just shut it down and you give a lump sum to all of these uh, of these uh, public employees the school teachers yeah, the rosemary patchets and and well, such whatever in their account you uh-huh. just give it to them and they can manage their own money it's called personal responsibility yeah well that's kind of tough uh, these people were <laughs> I know, but you see, you're a really smart money guy most people are not that way otherwise we'd all be doing what you're doing fred it's not an easy job. It's a tough job, I can tell you that. That's why they ended up you coming up with PERS in risk. the first place. See, that's the part that never comes up. Who's going to take the risk? Well, it looks like the taxpayers are taking the risk right now, Fred. That's exactly what I've said to them. I've gone down to this. I'll go down and speak again. By yeah. the way, if you want me to speak at your town, I'll be happy to come down and speak. If you want the Oregon's Grand Illusion, leave your email with Bill, and I will send it to you. All right, Fred, I really appreciate you uh, checking in about this. and. The part in the article about Rosemary Paget that, that just absolutely blows me away. 
that uh, for what PERS is paying her right now, they would have had to have the equivalent in the private sector of $2.8 million put away. Boy, we talk about the million. That's mil- under. Yeah. That's if she has got 150, but she's getting a, a 38% more than her final salary, which puts her around 233. Mm-hmm. So I'm not even talking about her real pension. I'm talking about if she if she's if, if she had just gotten her if she just retired with her final year's salary. Yeah. yeah. Boy. No, and boy, then no. they get a 2% raise. Every year. Well, well, maybe this is what they mean by the best and the brightest going into government service here, Fred, because uh, they understand the deal. They look at this math and say, boy, I got to go here. There's no way I could do this in the private sector. Well, maybe that's, that's what they why, mean. Well, if you read the Millionaire Next Door book, which is covered in this article, the top 20 percent of all Americans, that's the top one fifth, after home equity, have $60,000. Hmm. Only 2.8 percent of all Americans in this country are first generation millionaires. And she's a multimillionaire. Technically a multimillionaire. Not not, not cash in her bank account, but yeah, that's how it's going to be paid out over years. And we're not just picking on Rosemary, because I'm sure Rosemary is a nice woman. She's just an example, though, uh, illustrative of the problem that the system is, uh, is, is going to be biting us in the butt here sooner rather than later.